Hello everyone, this is Blue Flower Witch, and I have a special amount announcement I wanted to make on my channel. Um, I was listening to the Pagans Tonight radio show last night, September 21st, um, w with uh, Patrick McCollum, and I learned of some information that I did not know before, and I wanted to pass that along to you. It's about the case um, that Patrick McCollum is involved in regarding pagan prisoners. And a lot of people might not think that it involves them, but because it's in federal court, it very much does involve every pagan in the United States. This video is going to outline uh, the background on the case and also why it involves us and what we can do about it. I'm also I'm putting a Creative Commons license on this video so that other people can vid can mirror this video and put it on their channel so that it has more exposure. Um, also, I'm going to be monitoring this case, and if there's new information, I'll be making new videos. So if you want to subscribe to my main channel, Blue Fire Witch, for updates, um, you can find them there. Now, to give you some background on the case, this happened uh, more than 15 years ago in California, where one prisoner was awarded the, the uh, ability, basically, to practice their religion of Wicca and given certain rights, including access to um, a volunteer chaplain, who is Patrick McCollum, um, as well as having the ability to celebrate the Sabbats and also to have certain tools at their disposal. Patrick McCollum, as the chaplain, noticed that um, that the prisoners that were involved in this, obviously, after over time, the group grew from from one prisoner to several prisoners that were um, of all sorts of pagan faiths. In the state of California, all pagan faiths are under the the, the term Wicca. Yeah, I know that's not right, but you know. That's the way that they term it. So when I'm speaking of the, the prisoners that, and their Wiccan rights, we're really talking about several different types of pagans here, including, you know, um, Asatru and Odinists and, and Druids and, you know, Hellenists like myself. Anybody that would be considered to be pagan was under the Wiccan um, umbrella in uh, the California court system and in the California penal system, too. Patrick McCollum, as their chaplain, noticed that mo many of these prisoners were receiving unfair treatment in the form of discrimination and actually being assaulted, not being able to uh, practice their sabbats and other things um, that were awarded to other types of prisoners of other religions, but yet the, the pagans basically weren't getting their um, rights afforded to them, even though the courts had said that you need to give these prisoners these rights. Patrick McCollum had attempted to go through the proper channels in order to amend and be able to take care of these prisoners as he was their chaplain, even though he was a volunteer chaplain. Um, he went through the proper channels within the, the prison system, and basically every step of the way, people had said they had, they'd acknowledged that they knew that the, the ruling that, that had awarded the prisoners the rights to practice their religion, but had refused to honor that ruling and suggested that if he had a problem with it, that he should sue them. Now, regardless of how you feel about prisoners and prisoners' rights, to treat one group differently than other groups within a certain subculture would be considered to be wrong. So um, I consider it to be very wrong that the pagans weren't allowed to celebrate their religion, but yet Christians and Jews and Muslims and, and um, other groups were allowed to practice their religion freely. The California prison system has done several things in order to try to derail the Wiccan growth within their uh, prison system. Um, these acts include um, breaking up the group of pagans that had grown at that one pr uh, prison that, that uh, Patrick McCollum was volunteering at and sending those pr prisoners to other prisons. Um, Fortunately, it backfired on the prison system, and basically when those pagans went to other prisons, they then found larger communities and were able to, you know, educate people who were interested in paganism and grow the community further. For Patrick, one of the things that was the straw that broke the camel's back was, a, was an incident of direct discrimination where a dying pagan prisoner 
Um, he had heart failure, as far as I remember, was denied pagan chaplaincy. Um, the prison would only provide a Christian chaplain for this pastor, this, this prisoner, so that they could, quote unquote, save him um, and wasn't going to provide him the pagan chaplaincy that he had been awarded, even though he was dying. A lawsuit that McCollum filed, he, he filed on his own at first, but he filed both on behalf of himself and for the pagan prisoners that had been discriminated against. Uh, he filed for himself because he had applied to, he had tried to apply to become a pagan chaplain that was paid, but um, they would not allow him to since the uh, California prison system only acknowledges five religions uh, for paid chaplaincy. And those religions are Catholicism, Protestant Christianity, Judaism, Native American religion, and Islam. The state had claimed that it had done research to suggest that Wiccans don't need a chaplain, and therefore they shouldn't have to provide one. But they later had to admit that they never did such a study and they had perjured themselves. They also destroyed documents that the uh, pagan prisoners that were involved in the case had presented um, to, to file grievances for their um, uh, discriminations. They destroyed those documents to destroy basically the evidence that there was any discrimination that happened. Now, knowing full well that the state had perjured itself and destroyed evidence, the court did nothing to punish the state for those actions. Ultimately, the case brought forth by Patrick McCollum was dismissed without prejudice. What this means was is that he did not have what he needed to bring the case at that time, but that he could bring it at a later date. The reasoning for this was that they suggested that an inmate must bring their own case and that the inmates that were involved in the case he was in lacked the evidence to bring their standing because of the, the state had destroyed their evidence. Um, Further, um, he would have to wait until a prisoner had won their case, showing that they do have rights as prisoners, as pagans within, you know, the prison system, that they have rights as pagans to practice their religion. So once a prisoner um, wins their lawsuit, proving that pagans deserve basically religious rights, after that, then uh, Patrick McCollum can bring his case which was an employment case because they refused to let him uh, fill out an application. So first, the prisoner needs to prove that they deserve religious rights and deserve a chaplain, and then the, the next case can come forward. Now, there are a few sources that have pointed out a hidden player in this court case. Uh, one of them is the uh, magazine Witches and Pagans. I picked up an issue at my local pagan shop for around $7. Um, and it is a really good read, that one, because it's got some letters in there by pagan prisoners. I suggest you pick that up. Um, also, the website for Americans United for the Separation of Church and State, they have an article um, that uh, reveals the involvement of a group called the Wall Builders. You may not have heard of the wall builders before. They are a Christian dominionist group, which means they are theocrats. They believe that this country is a Christian nation that should be run by Christians and for Christians. According to Americans United for the Separation of Church and State, the wall builders do not believe that pagans have rights under the First Amendment, that the only religions that have rights under the First Amendment are monotheistic religions. Now, during the court case, the wall builders were seen as a friend of the court on, on behalf of the state of California and um, did argue in front of the court that witchcraft is not a religion and shouldn't be given equal rights to other religions. Many people who are not in prison and don't plan to be may not one may wonder how this applies to them, um, what this means to people who are not in prison, especially those pagans that are not in prison. I should also tell you that pagans are not the only ones that are being discriminated and denied a chaplain 
in these cases, but also Buddhists and Hindus and other religious faiths are being excluded from having a chaplain um, in the state of, of California. Because this is a federal court case, it is somebody suing, suing an entire state, so it cannot be a state case. It has to be a federal court case. When a federal court makes a ruling, that ruling applies all across the board. So if they rule that pagans do not have the same rights as other religions and do not deserve the same rights as other religions, Therefore, it doesn't just apply to pagan prisoners, but it applies to every pagan in the United States. Many people have argued that because we're protected by the First Amendment, that this wouldn't matter, that the Constitution, of course, rises above all. But when a court rules that pagans are not protected by the First Amendment, we're not protected by it. And that's it. Um, and there's several implications to that. One of them being that if you're if you're at a job and uh, they find out that you're pagan, they could fire you for it. Many people might be wondering what it is they can do, even if they don't live in the state of California. The first thing you can do is spread the word. I encourage anybody who wants to, to mirror this video um, and put it up in your channel. Please don't alter the content, um, but you are allowed to mirror this video. I'm going to give it a Creative, creative Commons license. Also, um, educate yourself on the matter. I'm going to post you some links where you can find out more information about it. Listen to the Blog Talk radio show from September 21st. That was last night with Patrick McCollum. There's a couple other videos, some by Magic TV, that they have up where you can educate yourself on this matter. Further, regardless if you live in the state of California or not, you can contact the governor of California and let them know that you are pagan and that pagans do need prison chaplains. Um, this will go directly to the court case because remember, they said that they did research that suggested that Wiccans and pagans don't need a chaplain for their services. Um, I, ironically, you know, one of the groups that's protected by them and doesn't get a chaplain is the Protestant church. And one thing that Patrick McCollum pointed out, which is true, is that the whole point of Protestantism was that you didn't need a chaplain between you and your God. So, you know, obviously, if they're arguing that we don't need a chaplain, then the Protestants don't either. And that's just, you know, unfair treatment of us. Um, but obviously, we do need chaplains for several different reasons. Um, that they're, they're obviously very helpful. Look at all the things that Patrick McCollum has done to help the pagans that are in prison right now. Lastly, I want you to drop a line to Patrick McCollum on his website, patrickmccollum.org, which will also be in the description of this video, um, and let him know that you support what he's doing. Also, um, the, the law firm Jones Day, they have put countless man hours on this and spent, you know, probably millions of dollars um, trying to get to, to help us pagans with our rights, even though they're not pagans. Um, it would also be nice to drop them a line. Um, further, you know, um, organizations like Americans United for the Separation of Church and State, which has helped us in the past with the Roberta Stewart case um, to get, you know, pentacles on gravestones um, back in 2007. They have also posted information on the website and have, have voiced their support for this issue. Um, please drop them a line and let them know how much we uh, we appreciate that. Um, I've, there's also, if you, if you pick up the issue of witches and pagans, there are some letters to pagan prisoners that are in this, and one of them specifically asks that people write that, that prisoner. And I would suggest that if you, if you have the time, that you write that prisoner and tell them how much you support what they're doing. Anyway, um, I'm going to um, end it here. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, if you want more information, subscribe to, the, to my channel, and I will try to put more updates on my channel. Um, and uh, hopefully we can get the word out. Blessed be everybody.